Welcome to telescoping series. So the general idea here is sometimes we have series uh, that sort of the middle terms wind up uh, canceling it, each other out. So sometimes uh, we can rewrite series in such a way that um, much of a partial sum cancels out, that much of uh, the nth partial sum cancels out, um, therefore making the nth partial sums fairly have simple formulas. So giving the nth partial sums for our S sub n uh, simple formulas. So I have a couple examples here of sort of two different ways where we can run into uh, what we call telescoping series, where the series essentially collapse on themselves. So um, first up, let's look at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative one over n squared plus n. So we're gonna actually run partial fractions here. So negative one over n squared plus n is the same thing as negative one over n times n plus one. So note, um, we can rewrite negative one over n squared plus n as negative one over n times n plus one. And we're going to go ahead and run partial fractions on this. So write this as a over n plus b over n plus one. So if we plug in uh, n equals zero, then we have, uh, oh, let me rewrite that top first. So this is the same as negative one equals a times n plus one plus b times n. Plugging in n equals zero, then this becomes negative one is equal to a. Plugging in n equals negative one, then we have negative one is equal to negative b and so we get that b must be equal to one. So we have that our uh, negative one over n squared plus n, or our overall sum, the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one over n squared plus n is exactly the same thing as taking the sum from n equals one to infinity of um, negative one over n plus one over n plus one. So let's just see what happens when we deal with this. So if I look then at the nth partial sum, my first term would be negative one over one plus a one half. Right? That's negative one over n, plus one over n plus one for n equals one. So that we add for n equals two, we would have a negative one over two plus a one over three. To that we add for n equals three, we would have a negative one over three plus a one over four. We keep going. Then we would have a, for um, n equals n minus one. We would have a negative one over n minus one plus a one over n. 
I've changed these to capital N for my series so I don't have a confusion of, lower, of lowercase n representing two things. And then we have for our final term, we would have a negative one over n plus a one over n plus one. So note that we can uh, rearrange our parentheses. We can use our associative property of addition to rewrite this as a negative one plus one half minus one half plus one third minus one third plus, presumably we would continue with a one fourth minus one fourth, the pattern continues. Then we would have a plus a one over N minus a one over N ending with a plus one over n plus one on its own. So each of these pairs goes to zero. So we wind up just with a negative one plus a one over n plus one. And as we let capital N go to infinity, this should wind up just going to negative one. And so this is a case where we converge to negative one. I need to shrink things just slightly. Let me just shrink things a little bit to fit in one more line. So we wind up getting, therefore, that um, the series converges. To negative one. All right, let's go ahead and look at one more example. Let's take the uh, sum from n equals one to infinity of the natural log of n plus two over n. So here, uh, recall that the natural log of capital A over capital B is the natural log of capital A minus the natural log of capital B. So this one is much simpler than running partial fractions. We can very quickly rearrange this. So we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of the natural log of n plus two over n is the exact same thing as the sum from n equals one to infinity of the natural log of n plus two minus the natural log of n. So if we write this out, we have that our S sub, uh, I'm gonna do capital N again. Our S sub capital N is equal to, for N equals one, we would have our first term would be um, the natural log of three minus the natural log of one. Then we would add to that the second term would correspond to N equals two. We would have the natural log of four minus the natural log of two. For n equals three, we would be looking at the natural log of five minus the natural log of three. For n equals four, we would have the natural log of six minus the natural log of four. We continue on. 
we would have for uh, n equals, let's do capital N minus um, two. We would have the natural log of capital M minus the natural log of capital N minus two. Then we would have plus, uh, this is for n equals capital N minus one. We would have the natural log of capital N plus one minus the natural log of capital N minus one. And then finally, for n equaling capital N, we would have plus the natural log of capital N plus two minus the natural log of capital N. Um, I did a few extra terms as compared to the previous example this time, um, because we're going to have a couple, a few more, or a couple more terms left in our final answer here. So um, note that I have a natural log of three can cancel, natural log of four can cancel. I would be able to cancel natural log with five with an additional term. But that minus ln1 and minus ln2 do not cancel. So as we rewrite this, we would have a minus the natural log of 1, a minus the natural log of 2. And then from there, we will have our pairs. So we have a plus natural log of 3 and a minus natural log of 3. We have a plus natural log of 4 and a minus natural log of four. We keep going and we run into a plus. Um, we are, uh, let's see. We are able to cancel natural log n. Presumably we would also be able to cancel our natural log n minus ones uh, with a term from the middle. But that natural log n plus one and the natural log n plus two will never cancel out. So the last thing to cancel will be a plus natural log n minus natural log n. And then we will have a plus natural log of n plus one and a plus natural log of n plus two. So the natural log three minus natural log three, natural log four minus natural log four, natural log n minus natural log n, all cancel out. We wind up with a negative natural log of one minus natural log of two plus natural log of n plus one plus natural log of n plus two as our formula for S of n. Of course, natural log of one is also just zero, so we could list that off as we uh, let that go away. Um, but in general, this whole thing will go to infinity as capital N goes to infinity. Right? Um, natural log of n, natural log of n plus 1, natural log of n plus 2, that all goes to infinity as, as n gets large. Um, and so what we have here then is that uh, the series diverges. So both of these series are called telescoping series. Um, essentially, our partial sums collapse in on each other, right? So the terms of the partial sums uh, collapse in on each other. Right. You think about like the 
uh, they usually call it telescoping, right? When you have a telescope that you can extend out and then collapse in on itself. Um, so hence the concept. And as we saw here, telescoping series may or may not converge, right? Um, so as we saw in these two examples, Um, telescoping series may converge or diverge. Right. So just because as many of the terms wind up collapsing and canceling each other out um, doesn't mean that the limit will still go to a finite number. So that is telescoping series. That's another sort of series you can spot. Um, the most common place where it's an easy spot is when we have natural log of something over something, because um, then we have our addition and subtraction. The other common place for telescoping series is with partial fractions. Um, so that is telescoping series.